So my name is Adele Diamond. I'm at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. I'm a Canada Research Chair and Professor of Developmental Cognitive Neuroscience. So my specialty are executive functions and the prefrontal cortex of the brain on which they depend. Prefrontal cortex and the interrelated brain areas are what subserve executive functions. Executive functions are things like self-control, selective attention, working memory, cognitive flexibility, problem solving, planning, reasoning. And I look at what biological things affect them, like hormones or neurochemistry, and what environmental things affect them, like poverty or interventions. And what I'm concerned about is to how, how to help kids thrive. And I think one of the ways is to help them have healthy executive functions. Well, I love to dance. And um, I was part of a dance troupe that toured the Soviet Union in 1990 and led a dance troupe that toured Czechoslovakia in 1992, which both says that I love dance and that it may not be so good to have me come to your country as a dancer because both countries ceased to exist very shortly after I had toured there. Um, but looking at the benefits of dance and music for executive functions is the first time that I've been able to put the two main parts of my life together. My research hat, my academic hat, and my dancer hat. So one of the reasons I'm really interested is because it puts the different parts of me together. But um, I think traditional activities like dance and music um, arose everywhere and have been around so long because they have important benefits for kids. And one of those benefits is I think that they help executive functions. So recently we've been um, reviewing all the work on different programs to improve executive function. And we've been finding that certain things that people have assumed were right have no evidence behind them. So you read in the popular press and in some other reviews that aerobics will really improve your cognition and your executive functions, but it doesn't. Um, and um, the computerized cognitive training like working med, uh, CogMed or Luminosity, there's very little evidence that they have any lasting benefits. They improve what, you, what they train you on, but just on the narrow thing you trained on, and then that disappears after a year or two. So we've been thinking about how can you make benefits last? And we think that people have focused too much just narrowly training cognition or improving aerobics to improve cognition. Instead of thinking about the incredible power that the emotions have, whether you're emotionally invested, whether you're motivated, whether you're enjoying the activity. And we think that's key to whether they're benefits. So that's what we're starting to look at, to look at the roles of emotions and joy and investment in the activity. For example, if the people doing it have some say in shaping the training, do they become more invested? Do they enjoy it more? And does it benefit executive functions more? Um, and another thing that's gotten almost no attention is how to make benefits last. We all have known that the benefits last sometimes just a week, sometimes a month, sometimes a year, occasionally two years, but never more than that. But nobody has looked at what would help them last longer. Like I'm really interested in the preschool programs, like um, High Scope or Tools of the Mind or kindergarten programs. Now we know that if your school experiences after that are very antithetical, to the way you, it was in preschool or kindergarten, those benefits can't possibly sustain in the face of being assaulted all the time. So what would be the best way to help them last? What do we need to help teachers in later grades do? What kind of booster sessions or reunions might help? And, and that's really important and it hasn't received attention and I, I wanna look at that. 